Hey everyone, Palumbo here. A while back, I made a video on how to use index match with multiple criteria, and it's been one of the most popular videos I've released to date with a little over 34,000 views. Well, that was then, and this is now, and now is all about XLOOKUP. If you haven't been using XLOOKUP, do yourself a favor and make the switch. It makes looking up data across tables so much easier than combining index and match, and it gives you a few new options, like the ability to designate a return value if a match isn't found, and the ability to search from top to bottom or bottom to top of a column. So in this video, I'm not only going to show you the basics of how to use XLOOKUP, but I'm also going to show you how to use XLOOKUP with multiple search values and how it works. So let's jump right in. Here we have an Excel workbook that contains the inventory and order data for a new online store a friend of mine is starting. We have a table here with all of the current inventory, which includes the same item in different colors and sizes. And she's asking for a quick way to see if a particular size and color combination is in stock for any particular item. Now, of course, she can just filter the table, but there's a better way of doing that. We're going to use XLOOKUP to create a widget for her to quickly look up available inventory. But before we do that, let's take a look at the basics of XLOOKUP. So we can bring up the XLOOKUP formula by typing equal sign, start typing XLOOKUP. Once it's highlighted in the drop down menu, we can just hit tab to select it. And notice here it tells us all of the required and optional parameters that we can give this form formula. The first thing we need to give it is a lookup value. So I'm gonna be looking up by product ID and let's use the product ID of 10. Now we need to give it a lookup array, which is what column or range we want XLOOKUP to be searching for that value in. And in this case, it's going to be column B for product ID. Next, it's the return array. So when it finds the match, what row on, on the row, from what column is it going to pull the corresponding value? And in this case, we're going to say product number. Now, after we put those parameters in, the next one is if not found. And notice that it has brackets around it, which means it's an optional argument that we can give this formula. We don't need to, but we can if we want to. Now, this is if not found. We can designate a value to return if XLOOKUP fails to find a match. And in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and put not found. Next, we can designate a match mode, whether we want XLOOKUP to look for an exact match, an exact match or next smaller item, exact match or next larger item, or we can even use wildcard character matches. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and do an exact match. And then lastly, we can designate how we want XLOOKUP to search the column from first to last, last to first, and there are some binary searches, which for the most part, I don't think you're going to use very often. I know I don't. But once we put that in, we can complete the formula by closing the parentheses. I'm going to hit enter. And what we get back is spaghetti strap camisole mini dress black M. And if we look on the 12th row, which is product ID 10, that is exactly the corresponding value. But let's say we give X lookup the value of the lookup value of 100. We hit that we get back not found because there's not a hundred product IDs. So there's not going to be a match. So that is the basics of how to use XLOOKUP. Great, now that we know how to use XLOOKUP, let's see how to use it with multiple search criteria. And first we need to understand how Excel and computers in general think about true versus false. So in this column, I wanna test for all the values in the color column to see if they match with royal blue. So let's type in color, and we're gonna say equal open parentheses. Let's just grab all of the values in the color column, and we're gonna say equal to royal blue. Close parentheses, enter, and it evaluates every value in column E to see whether or not it matches with royal blue. And you see we have a lot of false returns here, but if we scroll down the section that has royal blue, we get true. So let's do the same thing with the size column. So we're gonna do equal, open parentheses, size, we're gonna grab all the values there, scroll back up, equal to, say, large. 
we get the same thing. But notice here, for every row that we have a large, it's returning true in column M. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a column called Booleans. Now, what's a Boolean? Well, in columns L and M, you and I see true and false, but Excel sees ones and zeros because to Excel, false equals zero and true equals one. And we can verify this by multiplying these two values together. So in this case, I'm going to say false times false gives me a zero. Let's run this down. So if we look here, false times false gives us a zero. False times true also gives us a zero because if false equals zero, anything times zero is going to be zero. If we put a filter on these rows and we filter the Boolean column for the number one, we're going to get the row that has the color of royal blue and the size of large. And that's because our evaluation pulled true for both of these columns. One times one equals one. And that is how Excel thinks about true versus false. And it's called a Boolean. So now that we have an idea of what a Boolean is and how it works, Let's use it with XLOOKUP to pull an item using multiple search criteria. In this worksheet, we have a place to put our search criteria. First, we have a product description, then the color, and then the size. And we want to pull the quantity that matches all of these values. So let's start building our XLOOKUP formula. So we're going to do XLOOKUP tab to go ahead and select that. The first thing we need is the lookup value. What we're going to be looking up is one, because when we multiply true times true times true, it's going to return the number one. So that's going to be our lookup value. Now we need the lookup array, or in this case, multiple lookup arrays. And we're going to do this the same way that we did it in the previous columns. We're going to do an open parentheses. And the first thing we need to look for is the product description, the spaghetti strap camisole mini dress. And that's going to be in column D. And we're going to say that needs to be equal to this value. Then we close those parentheses. We multiply that against our next lookup array, which is going to be color. So open parentheses, we select color, and we say that's going to be equal to this value, close parentheses, multiply that by size, which is going to be this column. And I forgot my open parentheses. So our size column equal to this value, close parentheses. So that's going to be our lookup arrays. And the return array is going to be the quantity. So I'm going to select the quantity column, which is column I. And I am going to designate a value for if not found, and it's going to be just not found. And that's all I'm going to put in there. So if I hit enter, we get back 15. So let's look what we have over here. So the product description is spaghetti strap camisole mini dress. The color is white and our size is going to be medium. And our quantity here is 15. So XLOOKUP returned the correct value, but let's test it. Let's go in here and let's change this to black. So same size, same product description, but now the color is black. And we should have the value of medium, which is 11. And that is what is returned here, quantity 11. So that is how we use XLOOKUP in order to grab a single value using multiple criteria. It's by understanding that ultimately true and false are ones and zeros. And all we need to do is multiply those together to look for the value of one. So now that you not only know how to use XLOOKUP, but also how to use it with multiple search criteria, your ability to pull the correct value out of thousands of rows just got so much easier. As always, I hope this was helpful. If it was, please consider subscribing to my channel for all things data and automation and give this video a like. It don't cost anything. 
Um, but thank you for watching. And as always, have a great day.